This is a House of Logic video on the subject of Proxmox API and how to use the API tokens. Um, so I've done a couple of other videos about uh, the API and how to use uh, PowerShell and Python and Postman um, to get a token, um, sorry, get a ticket um, from the API and uh, to interact with them. Now, what you can do instead is you can actually use a user token. And I did go part way into the setup of this um, on one of the videos, but never actually used them. And there was a question on a, um, a comment on one of the videos about um, how to use the, the plain um, straightforward API token rather than the, um, the ticket approach. So I've done a little bit of digging and um, found out the following is how to do it. Um, so what you want to do is you want to go into the API tokens and you want to select your user. So we're going to use user2, um, which we've used previously. So this user's already been set up with um, relevant permissions. And you're going to want to put in there a token ID. Now, um, this needs to be, I believe it's 24 characters and it shouldn't start with a number. Um, I tried earlier on with a number and it didn't like it very much. So mix of uppercase and lowercase characters um, let's get rid of the white space at the beginning there as well. And I believe that should do the job. So um, privilege separation, this will determine um, some of the actual access permissions. I'm not going to go into great detail on that at the moment. Um, we're going to set it to never expire. So when we add that, um, what it's now given us is the details of what the username um, is or the token ID. Full user um, details are with the username attached to it. And we also have the secret. So we're going to copy the secret value, which looks similar to a Windows GUID. Great confusion to me previously. Now, what you want to do with those is you're going to want to take those and put them into the application that you're going to use to, um, to communicate with the API. Now, I've already done some of the prep work here, and I've tested this out. So this is Postman, if you're not familiar with it. And what you want to do within Postman is you actually want to um, send, put in the uh, the authentication details here. So I'll just copy this off onto a notepad and the details need to look like this as an authorization header. So if I just copy those across now, you'll note that you have the authorization field here that we've added in. So rather than going in here, um, you can get very precise details of what you want to include as that header. And we've got PVE API token equals then the username at PVE. So that's your username details as you've copied from that dialog box. Um, and with an exclamation mark, then the ID of the token, follow that by the actual um, secret for the token, which is that um, globally unique ID or GUID like value. And you take that and you paste those into the authorization field um, within whichever um, system you're using. So if you're doing this in PowerShell, you would um, create an authorization header um, value and exactly the same with um, the uh, with Python as well. And now we're just going to hit send and you should see this refresh down here. And there we go. It's just run through and it's actually just told us the version. So it's very straightforward when you know how. And uh, yes, you can make use this and it becomes stateless and you don't need to go through the ticket process. So just to round this off, if we uh, if we actually change the uh, the API address being used here. So we'll go with uh, nodes. In fact, I've probably got it on one of these other tabs on here already. Oh, no. So we'll go nodes. And then the node name, which in our case, there we are, we've got some, let's go with um, that one there. So that gives us PVE1 is the node name. We're looking at Kemu or Quemu. Um, so it's the actual VMID100, and we're going to get the current status for that. So again, this is with the authorization um, using uh, the token there. And if we hit go, then there we go. So it's, uh, oh, permission check failed. So that's great, actually. So it shows us that we don't have the permission um, to do that let's go back into there and see what we can do about addressing that so pve1 says that the token does not have permission um, let's have a look if we go into uh, users so that i believe is because we don't have the privilege separation i'm actually going to turn that off let's just try that as if we are going in as a completely main user and we'll try again, and let's see if we can do that.
Aha, we can. Okay, so there's um, there's one of the differences. Um, and in fact, what we would, I believe, do is you actually have to assign a specific permission. So let's have a look. There we are, permissions. So that's showing permissions. So yes, that's actually now got all permissions because let's pick those up sp up from the user itself. So let's try changing, turning that off. Put privilege separation back on. And if we now go and look at where we set these, which bear with me a moment. So I think let's have a look at that then. So user two permissions. Okay, so user two has got the direct permissions and the API token has got privilege separation. Is there a way to add it? Not through here. Certainly not through there. Uh, let's see if there's a way of doing it on here. If there's anything obvious. Now this I haven't practiced or researched. So I'm just gonna pause the video for a moment and do a quick bit of research and find out if we can do this. I wasn't planning on making the video this long, but it's, uh, but it's interesting, so we're gonna go with it. Okay, so I think I've found out what we need to do, which is you actually need to go to the, the root section here of permissions. So I was clicking down on API tokens. Um, so you need to go into here, and this is where you can add the permission. And there we are, API token permission. So if we go and grant, in this case, let's go with nodes to this particular user, and we can choose the API token. And the role we're going to give it is, let's go with... Uh, okay, so that is PVE admin. Let's see about, is there a VM? PVE VM admin, that will do. Uh, if we go with that. Okay, so we now have an explicit permission for um, user two. And if we go back to our API token, we have the, <coughs> excuse me, um, we have the privilege separation and we can then uh, close that down so previously when we tried this this didn't work and it produced a null output um, uh, but now so we've got some output there from when we've turned off privilege separation but if we now try again and we go we have a permission check failure on that specific um, VM but can we get the node state from PVE yes we can Okay, so there we go. Um, obviously, it becomes a lot more complicated in terms of what you're trying to set up, and you've got to deal with the uh, the token. It's uh, the a token API. Sorry, the API token user effectively, and what um, what that actually has permissions to separate to your individual user. Um, but nonetheless, it is the way that you can grant um, stateless um, token based access into Proxmox. Um, so there we go. I think we're going to just about leave that one there. You can see the permissions, as I said, is underneath the directly under the permissions, and that's where you assign your token access. Um, so thanks very much for watching, and uh, hope you enjoyed some of the uh, snafus along the way there. Um, if you, this video has been of interest to you, please uh, like and subscribe and all that good stuff. Um, otherwise, we will catch you next time. Thanks very much. Bye now.